name is Ben Olmsted. I'm a firefighter with the Gig Harbor Fire Department here um, out at Station 59 in the Artendale area. Um, this engine serves uh, this Artendale area as well as Fox Island. Um, so I'll take you around the engine here. Um, just a quick little tour of the front of the engine. We have a what we call a bumper line, which is a 200 foot pre-connect line. We also have um, some little forestry hose for wildland fires and brush fires and, and stuff like that. Um, so we'll come around the, the side here and I'll show you where I'm sitting today. I'm the driver of this engine today. I'll just give you a peek inside the cab. So if you look over here, we have two different foot pedals. Um, one controls our siren and one controls our horn. Um, and then we have a horn up here that activates um, the sirens as well. So we kind of have a couple different options as far as using our uh, lights and sirens. Now we go back here, this is where our third firefighter sits. Um, it's called the jump seat and it has a SCBA mounted in the seat. Um, so if we're going to a fire, he can quickly pack up and he'll be ready to go as soon as we set the air brake. Lots of gear. Um, we do have a lot of different types of stuff. So we carry gear for wildland fires. We carry our structure firefighting gear. Um, and that's just kind of where we keep our stuff. All right, so this here is the pump panel. This is my responsibility for the day as the driver and the operator of this engine. Um, so you can see we have lots of different handles and buttons and switches and all sorts of fun, shiny things. Um, and all this is is basically my way of moving water from either the fire hydrant or the um, engine water out the hose lines. That's all these are, they're just handles. Um, and it's just hydraulics. Um, it takes some time to, to get down the hydraulics, but once you, once you know it, you know it. Um, and it's just operating valves essentially and moving water from one place to the end of the hose line. Uh, if we move into here, uh, we can see we have more gear. Another SCBA, this is for the driver. So this will be, this is my SCBA here. Um, this is where I store my bunker gear. We have lots of different tools and um, appliances for hoses and um, hydrants. This is called our hydrant bucket. We have lots of tools to attach to a, a hydrant to make our water supply. Um, and then again, lots of other different appliances that um, we can use for different situations. Move over here. This is kind of a, the fun cabinet. Um, we have our set of irons, which is a halogen and a flathead axe that's married together. Um, so a lot of times you'll hear somebody say, go grab the irons. That's, that's what they're referring to. Um, then we had a, have a pig head axe and some other um, tools and equipment. This swings open to uh, some shovels. Um, this is a, what we call a piercing nozzle, so we can use this for a lot of different applications. Uh, its intended purpose was for aircraft rescue or aircraft firefighting, so you could actually punch this nozzle through the side of the skin of an aircraft, um, and it attaches to an a inch and three quarter hose line, and we can put out a fire that way. But again, most tools that we have in the fire service have more than one use. That's just one of those. Moving back here. This is where we carry all of our EMS equipment and supplies. Um, so this fire engine runs on fire and medical calls. So that's if you wonder why you see a fire engine um, going along with an ambulance, this is why. Um, we carry our equipment, we carry an AED, so a defibrillator if we need to shock somebody, an extra SCBA. Um, this is our RIT pack. So if we have a firefighter go down, um, that's our pack we can use to help extricate them out of the fire in the, in the chance that that happens. Moving back here, we have our hose bed. Lots of hoses um, for all types of different applications. Um, this is a, what we call a two and a half. This is um, our blitz line. So that's another 200 feet of hose that's directly attached. It's pre-connected. Um, so we can pull this line off and we can uh, attack the fire almost immediately as soon as um, they're ready to be charged. More hose lines, different setups, um, different lays depending on our situation very versatile hose lines that we've, or uh, hose beds that we've gone to. We can use them in a lot of different applications. Here is our supply line. Now we have a thousand feet of that big yellow hose. Five inch hose, a thousand feet of it. So we can make a very long lay um, and supply an engine from a thousand feet away. Back here we have our saw, another hog bucket or hydrant bu bucket so we can uh, take this and take the five inch right to the uh, hydrant and make our supply there. We have two different saws. Um, this saw we can use for if we need to cut a hole in the roof for ventilation to release and uh, let all that trapped heated gases and air out of the structure, make it um, more viable for life and for us. 
And then this K12 here is used for forcible entry or if we do have to cut holes in something, a metal roof or something like that, we can, we can use this saw for that. Hi, my name is Nick Langlow. I'm a lieutenant here at Gig Harbor Fire and Medic 1. One of the three lieutenants stationed at Station 59 that we split time on the engine. And my role primarily is to uh, manage the day-to-day -day operations at, the, this comp at this fire station and then run fire ground operations in the initial stages before we get a command officer on scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap around onto the officer side or the passenger side of the fire engine and continue talking about some of the tools that we carry on our apparatus. So as we work into this uh, compartment here, uh, the primary piece of equipment I want to mention is this um, positive pressure ventilation fan. And we'll use this as a way to eject smoke and uh, toxic gases from a structure, structure fire as a way to um, improve visibility and to improve tenability for the occupants. So that's our positive pressure fan. And then we also carry uh, fire extinguishers just like you probably have in your own home or hopefully you have in your own home one with water and one with a dry chemical extinguisher for different types of fires. Various tools and equipment that we carry for different things. Stop signs here. Let's reference the stop signs really quick. One of the things that's uh, really important to us and very dangerous uh, for the, for the fire, uh, firefighters is um, traffic accidents. And it's very important that you uh, slow down as you're approaching traffic accidents and not get stuck uh, looking at the traffic accident and not paying attention to where you're going. So if you see one of our firefighters out with these stop or slow signs, please heed those warnings as we have active emergency operations going on and we want to make sure that you're safe and we want to make sure that the firefighters are safe. Uh, this compartment here starts some of our auto extrication equipment. So like those auto accidents that I talked about where you uh, we'd ask you to slow down and be cautious about how you approach. Um, we use this equipment for auto extrication. Sometimes we'll have to stabilize a vehicle if it's no longer on its wheels. So if it's on its side or on its roof, we have equipment here that we can stabilize the vehicle so we can make entry into the vehicle to get you out if you're stuck or injured and aren't in a place where you can get out on your own. <clears throat> Moving further down the, the engine, these are more uh, auto extrication tools that we have here. We just purchased these in the last uh, year and a half. These are battery powered extrication tools. I think many of you probably have heard the jaws of life used as a, as a reference term to some of the equipment we use. <clears throat> that would be these. Uh, we used to have hydraulically powered equipment that required a big power plant motor and hoses. And now we've gone to battery operated, which are much more mobile, a lot quieter, um, lighter weight and easier to use, not to mention stronger than the uh, old tools, old style tools we had before. <clears throat> This uh, part of the engine here essentially mirrors uh, the other side with the exception of there's no controls over on this side for the pump panel, but we have the same type of hoses and ports that we, uh, we can either intake water from the hydrant or we can discharge water uh, through the fire pump. More hose lines, uh, tools that we use for various types of um, instances. And then as we move, uh, Back here, this is the, uh, again, like I said, the officer side of the fire engine. This is where I carry uh, my equipment, my personal gear, and where I sit. So this is the back seat here where either a, an additional firefighter will sit if we have one on duty, or I'll keep my personal gear um, inside the cab to make sure that I have it ready to go when I need it. And then uh, on the front seat here, this is my uh, riding seat that I keep uh, my portable radio in. And uh, we also keep a SCBA, a self-contained breathing apparatus in the seat so that as I'm going to the fire, I can don that gear when I get, so when I get there, I'm ready to go and don't have to, any delay um, in, in uh, starting to mitigate the problem. So this is where I sit. One of the things I would communicate to everybody out there is if you see the fire engine approaching, coming to your house or car accident, it's uh, as long as you can safely do so, if, if you can try and migrate towards the right side of the fire engine where I'm sitting, so we can start to make some resource determinations and we can start to get a handle on, on any given situation. The driver is very busy getting his or her tasks done and from a, a resource determination and a mitigation perspective, come into the right side of the fire engine, come into the window, and then just waiting patiently as you can, and we'll, we'll start to work through some of the process of mitigating your situation. So head to the right side of the fire engine, whether it's your house or a car accident, and we'll start to get some of that process working. All right, so we're going to welcome you, uh, fi probationary firefighter Collins. He's going to walk you guys through um, what we call taking a hydrant, how we establish a water supply from the fire hydrant to the engine, 
um, as well as we're gonna flow our deck gun or our master stream um, off this fire engine. So Mike's gonna take the, take over. As you said, I'm probationary firefighter Collins, and the first thing we're gonna walk you through is t connecting to a hydrant. First thing that we're going to do as we approach the hydrant is we're going to move around to the back side and we're going to check that our top nut is tight. And then we are going to break this side connection where we're going to put our hydrant gate. Get that nice and loose. Then we're going to break our storage connection where we hook up our hose. And then we're going to make sure that this one's tight as well. So we're going to replace our hydrant wrench on top. We're gonna loosen that up, keep track of that, don't wanna lose it. Hydrant gate's closed. Get that attached. Come around to our five inch. We're gonna hook up, connect, make sure it's nice and tight because we don't want it blown off. Slowly opening control our water flow. Once we see that the hose is charged, we can start to open up faster. Now we'll walk over to this side and I'll, and I'll show you nicely connected, we're free of kinks, and our engine is now supplied with water. Hopefully you've uh, been able to learn a little bit more about what we have on our fire engine apparatus. Again, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us um, through our website or through uh, the, the, our, our telephone. We'd be happy to come um, help you through some of your processes and answer your questions. But I uh, hope you learned something today and we're uh, always happy to be here and respond when you need us. Thank you.